Hello and welcome to my morning note. One of the problems with the Eurozone is that there are just too many places to look at once, or arguably there aren't enough places to hide. In the last few days we've had warnings from the IMF that both Italian and Spanish banks are inadequately capitalised, that they need to address their asset quality. Also, if you look at the credit default swap market, you'll see that Bankia, a uh, rolled up Spanish bank that's long been a cause of great concern, is now apparently somewhat less risky than Monte de Paschi of Italy, the world's longest lasting surviving bank. What is going on and should we be concerned about this? With me now to discuss this is the head of credit strategy at RBS, Alberto Gallo. Alberto, thank you very much for joining me once more. We've heard so much about the Spanish situation and the, the big property bubble they had there, heard much less about the Italian banks as an issue. Why has this crept up on us? Well, Italian banks are smaller uh, compared right. to the size of the economy and therefore mm. Italy has been not, as, not concerned as much as Spain in dealing with them. Right. But as the ECB asset quality review approaches and the stress tests that banks will face uh, at the beginning of next year, these problems will, uh, will basically be uncovered. So the IMF uh, already has warned uh, Italy as well as Spain earlier that mm. banks don't have enough provisions against bad loans that are rising uh, since, the, since the crisis. Now the elephant in the room is Montepaschi. There's a lot of mid-sized banks in Italy and right. Spain which have problems, but Montepaschi is just too big. Uh, to fail or too big to be merged with other banks. Okay, let's take a look at this in context. This is a chart that uh, you provided. So this is non non performing loans uh, for for different larger or medium sized Italian banks. You see, Monte is uh, quite high on that list. T take us through this chart. Well, this highlights the banks with the highest stock of uh, of bad loans, and the blue part of the chart shows the proportion of that which is not covered by right. provisions. So the bank has not. Uh, provision for potential losses. In addition to this, Ponte is one of the banks that, have, that has lost a bit of deposits over the last year, around 7% uh, deposits. And uh, after the LTRO, which has calmed down fears, some mm. of these mid-sized banks have decided to buy a lot of uh, sovereign debt. So right. they're, not, uh, they're not lending, but at the same time, they've become very vulnerable to swings in the yields of sovereign debt. Monte has around 10% or more than 10% right. in assets in, in sovereign. So it's very vulnerable to these moves. Now let's take a look at uh, how the Italian banking system as a whole is going about uh, cleaning up uh, its loan book. This is really quite an alarming graphic, it seems to me. The, the, the Italian banking system is vastly slower uh, at uh, forcing the issue than uh, more or less any of the other s significant systems in Europe. Exactly, and even though the Italian banks are a bit smaller and on average the two big banks are okay in terms of capital, uh, it will take a long time before cleaning up bank balance sheets and action is needed, needed urgently uh, for Italian banks to go back to sustainable levels of capital as the IMF has warned. Uh, and potentially some of the shareholders or perhaps bondholders could, could face losses as the ECB uncovers the uh, real capital needs of Italian banks. Now, how serious an issue could this be for those who are not holders of bonds or, or stock in Monte de, de Paschi? This is the third biggest bank in Italy. It's obviously not as systemically important as, as some of the banks that we've been discussing so far during the crisis. How significant could this be for the Eurozone crisis as a whole? Well, I think the good news is that uh, despite some pockets of weakness remain across mid-sized banks in Italy and Spain, mm. there are at the same time some more backstops that are being implemented across the Eurozone. For example, the new resolution funds at a national level as well as potentially ESM uh, recapitalizations after that. So there, are, there is more uh, supervision from the ECB, but there al there's also more backstops which should increase um, stability across the Eurozone. Final question, will banking reforms come in time to uh, avoid a, a, an, ugly, uh, an ugly finale to the Eurozone crisis? Well, I think the, the EU, EU policymakers are definitely uh, doing their best, uh, but what really concerns us is the local, the national pol politics in uh, hmm. uh, Spain, in Italy in particular, and to some extent in France. The, the Italian government is a coalition government, and so far they've lacked uh, the, the, the focus on key reforms like the labor reforms or the bank reforms that are urgently needed. So um, we could see more political risk there in the next quarters. Okay, Alberto, thank you very much indeed. It's very encouraging that we're now talking about slightly smaller order of problem than, uh, than we were maybe a year ago.
but the political problem remains very serious indeed and there are still many issues to be wound out in Europe's banking system before we can all relax.